Yo, 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 what's really good, y'all? It's your boy, Gif. I'm here with the homies from the Nifty Castle, Whoa with Menthol and Whoa Boy. The Nifty Castle just crash landed right inside the Latch City, y'all, because we're here for Art Start now. And it starts right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at those Never graphics. Fresh graphics. Fresh graphics. Who <laughs> is? Um, man, I just love seeing some DVs in there. I love seeing some Brian Lee. Oh man, that was that was some nice ghosts. Some, some ghosts. ghosts in there. Y'all represent. Um, but anyway, thanks for joining us, y'all. This is the newest, the newest show on the Lad City Network, Art Start Now, where we're gonna be digging in on a weekly basis every Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time into the creative process behind NFTs. We're gonna be talking about NFT culture, all the things that matter to you as an artist or a prospective artist, talking about like all of the coolest, biggest stories that are happening this week. We're gonna be bringing in the dopest artists to talk to you and share what they're working on, share their process. And we're just going to be having fun, hanging out, making weird stuff together. Um, Lola, I'd love to hear what you're thinking about this week or any any new things that are on the top of your dome piece. On the top of my dome piece, um, I just released a new song that I've had on repeat for the past forever since we made it and completed it. It's called Spend the Night. It's featuring some other homies, and you guys should check it out. I'm also thinking about which just occurred to me now that NFT NYC is coming up pretty soon. Kind of, kind of, it's creeping. That's been on my mind lately. Mm. Whoa, boy, what about you? Oh, I'm always thinking about art and creating things and making stuff because there's, it's, it, you can't avoid it. When you're in the space, you're just around so many freaking talented people and they all deserve a shot. There's so many people that deserve a spotlight and they're, and, and they're not uh, getting one uh, on them. So I think it's it's up for us, to, up, up to us sometimes to like, if we see something, if we see something that's wonderful uh, to shine our spotlight on it and to give people the shine that they deserve. Um, and, and also I've been, you know, th there's been some recent articles uh, that I've been digging into. I thought we could potentially take a look at some, uh, at some things here. Uh, time recently uh, has been uh, they, there's a new article that talks about the boom of NFTs once again, obviously, which we have been uh, experiencing. Uh, but they want to make sure that the the old ways that are history uh, doesn't repeat itself as far as art goes. Um, wait, wait, wait. NFT space. I thought, what? Whoa, whoa, I thought I thought NFTs were dead. Oh, you're right. Are, are you telling me NFTs aren't dead right now? You stand corrected. I'm, 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 I, uh, I guess, uh, what are we even doing here then? <laughs> what is that oh, see you guys. It's been real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, it's been good. It's been good. Bye. Uh, no, but, yeah, this article is, is highlighting a couple of different really important topics that we wanted to dig into a little bit, get some hot takes going right here uh, with Lola, Whoa Boy, myself. Um, just talking about, first of all, equity in the space, which is, of course, a very important thing that, you know, we care about as a community we want to be making sure that as we build this this new world together this new paradigm that we're changing you know we're not just making the same things over again that we're not just revisiting the same mistakes uh and things that we've been doing how do we improve upon it with new models right and so what this article is talking about is that a lot of those old models, some of those old issues are starting to present themselves, right? So everything from maybe, uh, you know, historically white males getting the, the most attention, getting the most sales, you know, getting the most collectors, getting the most opportunities, um, that seems to be something that's, you know, starting to replay itself, at least in certain uh, 
uh, situations on a certain level. So equity being really important, but also just some of those old business models, you know, like the old gallery models, the old agency models, um, very centralized uh, systems where the artists and the creators don't have a lot of, again, equity is one word, but leverage. They don't have a lot of ownership. They don't have a lot of leverage. Um, and, you know, you could argue have been taken advantage of, haven't been capturing a lot of the value that they deserve. Um, so how do we kind of, as a community, uh, protect against some of these old ways uh, leaking into this, to this new system and becoming not just the old normal, but the new normal again. Mm. Man, uh, I think that that obviously through Clubhouse uh, Gifted, we're very familiar with these these conversations, and they're extremely prevalent and important uh, that that we continue to to have uh, diverse voices heard. And, and in a space where, where the sentiment, the, what is vocalized is like, Hey, this system is decentralized. It's supposed to be equitable for everyone. Um, it, it's supposed to be like, everyone can play ball, but, but that's not, that's not how it's shaping up for, for a lot of, um, for, for a lot of people in the space. Um, and that's something that is brought up here, like in the article, uh, consistently, here's a quote from the piece itself. It's, there's a lot of collect there's a lot of collectors that think of this as a business and they see white men as the more secure investment. Um that how do we to how do we hear. upturn yeah. that, right? So yeah. so as as a community, we have to be focused on how do we upturn that sort of expectation or that belief, right? Because that's there's a belief system. Apparently, I don't come from the investor class of traditional art collectors, right? But you know, based on this article and what I've learned, there's a belief system in place that we're up against uh, from a lot of those investors that you know maybe white male artists are for some reason a better investment and that's something that we need to figure out as a community how do we upturn that sort of stereotype i think we could start spotlighting and actually investing in other artists that are not white cis male and maybe doing a little bit of research or if we know of anyone that falls under the category of not white and male putting them on and sharing their work or investing in them and their work too and showing up. I think that's one pretty straightforward way to kind of offset that, if I may say Absolutely. so. Absolutely. Yeah. And you are an example of that, you know, and that's part of the reason why we're so stoked to have you, Lola Menthol, grace this show, be part of this show as the first the first female uh, host, co-host on the Lad City Network. You know, we are committed to trying to feature artists, uh, bring on some of those diverse voices here, but you know, there's only so much we can do ourselves. You know, this is something that as a community, uh, we have to figure out how do we scale this, these ideas, these, these new ideas, these sentiments. Um, and I think, well, to your point, that's definitely one way to do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, on that note, Lola, what's the name of your new song? What should everybody check out? I want everybody to know about <laughs> Spend the Night. Nice. Um, my new song is called Spend the Night. You can find it in the link in my bio on Twitter or Instagram. It is on Spotify, produced by Kevin Liu, featuring myself and Melion. And we are all Asian American artists. So if you're interested in supporting such a group, <laughs> check out the link in my bio. Heck yeah. You. You, you know how I think of it? It's like, it is an example of because I mean, just generally, white people, white men have the most like opportunity, just generally, like, they're going to have uh, the most opportunity to, to uh, enter certain markets and, and be there in front of other people. So it's up to those who are, you know, interested in buying and those who are interested in investing and doing their research to, to, to basically not be lazy and like put people on a pedestal that may not have as many opportunities because their voices aren't being heard because they might not like have some of the same opportunities that uh, uh, marginalized communities um, that, that they don't have, you know, so 
Absolutely. So, I mean, on this note, right, we're just getting this show started. This is the first, one of the first times we're getting together. So, you know, y'all are on this journey with us, learning mm -hmm. this space, building the castle, building Art Start Now and building the Lad City Network together. So, you know, as we go through these awkward growth phase and figure out, you know, how we do this show to the best of our ability, we appreciate you hanging out with us. And on that note, you know, one of the things that we're going to be doing a lot on the show is highlighting artists. That's one of the core, you know, uh, tenets of this show is spotlighting artists that we love, creating a platform to highlight incredible artists that aren't getting in enough shine, that aren't getting enough spotlight. So we want you to be part of this, to be engaged. That's why we want the show to be live. That's why we, it's art start now. It's not yesterday. It's not later. It's not tomorrow. It's now. So in the comments, if there are, you know, any artists uh, who you think deserve a spotlight that we should be talking about on this show that we should be sharing in the nifty castle in the lads city uh discord on our twitter let us know and we'll do our best always to be paying attention to your feedback to any artist recommendations that you have and, and see what we can do to provide a spotlight um and on that i did want to ask kind of a thought experiment here a little bit and and like maybe i'll start with lola on this but you know whoa boy would love to get your thought and maybe even funkel we'll get fun uncle the homie up funkel. there somewhere he's up, up, up in the funkel. sky thanks um, for thinking so of me guys we can, <laughs> we can get fun uncle to come down to our level and, and talk about his thoughts on this a little bit but lola i would love to know as a thought okay. experiment for you for you as an artist you know you've got a lot of these big money investors and people that are starting to be really interested and try and get into the nft space um and they're 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 going to be centralizing and trying to centralize in different ways you know uh so what are you willing you know but some of them okay taking a step back some of them though are really trying to help artists and provide more of that value than has historically been provided you know maybe through typical gallery representation gallery uh arrangements you know they i would say they haven't done enough in the past to empower the artists some of them are better than others but you know you've got these new people coming in and let's say that a gallery offers you a great opportunity to put a bunch of you know exposure around your art um, you know, and, and host, you know, 10 of your NFTs on their platform. Um, what would that be worth to you? And what would you be willing to give up in this new NFT space uh, to a gal, like one of these new galleries or platforms that are trying to get in? That's a great question. I don't know what I'd be willing to give up. I don't know what's on the line in regards to that. I am very much a self-taught street artist kind of just doing everything on my own for the most part up until this point like this is the most community um in the art world that i have felt ever so mm -hmm. asking that question nothing specifically comes to mind when i think of like a gallery trying to like host my stuff or um or anything like that i think it would really depend. I I wouldn't jump on the opportunity right away, especially for hosting the NFTs, because I don't know what that would mean. In that case, it would it would be a very um case scenario basis. But yeah, like I said, I it it really depends. <laughs> if you want to elaborate on yeah, that okay. question, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't provide all, I didn't provide all the variables, so yeah. Take <laughs> well, so then I'll let you add. I'll let you add that in then. Uh, Gift that if you'd like to. Well, so let's say some gallery, you know, new big big investory people launching a, a new gallery come to you, Lola Menthol, as the artist that one of the artists that they want to showcase um, and help launch their new platform, and so they say hey we'll help you launch your 10 nft collection on our platform and we'll drive you know a million to five million views to your artwork and potentially establish the floor for your nfts at a higher level for you but in return we would like 50 percent of you know the sales on on those nfts like is that fair um hmm um 50 percent 
coming from like well, also the music the music business and the music industry and like the different splits that happen um behind the scenes for royalties and things like that between myself and then producer like this is the the best example that I would have for from my experiences to something like that and I think 50 percent uh, I don't know the best the best answer I have to your question is I don't know <laughs> that's fair I, yeah, that's fair. Sure I think that this is I think that this is I love this as a as a little thing where it's like Rich brings up gift that you bring up these like you you bring up uh, uh, different different sort of like yeah scenarios regarding like deals because educate one of the biggest things and I think that you you're drawing attention to this Lola is education in the space as regards to the structures and deals in general because uh, a lot of times people do uh, they they are one of the the greatest uh, aspects of, of this is the idea that there's no middle. There's no middlemen anymore and there's no um but but then you also have to take on the responsibility of learning much more in order to handle all of the the exactly. business uh, side of things uh yourself as an artist so it's like marketing so marketing much, yourself yes yeah i mean that's that's yeah. i think one of the biggest challenges for so many yeah. artists is that they might be able to create lots of amazing work but if but they might have not have the expertise time or energy to be out there building their own community and marketing their work right and so that's where it gets it gets uh really interesting i think and that's why this this thought experiment i thought was valuable maybe it's something we can bring up and ask you know other artists as well um just because these are the scenarios that, that are happening now right like i've been in talks recently and all these, you know, these big people, these big investors are coming in, launching their platforms, and they want the artists. But you know, what are the artists willing to give up to get that uh, that exposure and that opportunity that could potentially change yeah. their lives, right? So and it's what's like fair, and what's fair too. So it's like what is fair from the old, where it's like these people that are coming in saying, "Hey, this is what we've done, and and this is how much value we provide." And it's like, hey, but again, this is a new world too and let's find a there's a give and take so it's like figuring out what that looks like under these uh under these new confines and these new structures is like is important because there's definitely old old structures that have have worked in the past it's just a matter of making sure that um that it's beneficial uh as beneficial as it can be for these artists who are you know we have the potential to change their lives and 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 that's the goal for us here, at least, especially with the show too. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, Change yeah. Your I'm glad that you brought it up, like that. Um, the education and from my personal experience being in this space and like where I came from, I grew up with no resources in terms of like monetary or connections. Kind of just literally building everything from nothing. And that includes mm -hmm. the education and the exposure to the business aspect of art. All I've ever done was make it. I've just made art. All I ever did was think about making art and maybe like trying to get it out to as many people as possible. But how to do that wasn't wasn't really like a focus. Um, so I I'm grateful to the opportunity to share that information and the education that other artists might need to propel themselves forward and put themselves on a higher platform that they might not even know exists and to be aware of the different aspects of making art besides making art if you know what i mean <laughs> yeah in the in the song in our theme song it says we're gonna make it like we're gonna make things lola constantly making stuff uh, <laughs> but also in doing that um in just creating creating and just like being ex exhausting yourself um uh day in and day out uh being the creative that you are that's all we want you to be um but then also that should translate hopefully if you have the right team around you and 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 the proper resources uh as far as community goes then you should be able to also succeed um as well so that's the goal is creative people give them a platform fun uncle you got any yeah. thoughts man because we said we were going to bring you into this but yeah we want to we hear fun Fun Uncle, this is this this is the same question to you. So you're an artist, you've got ten pieces, and somebody says we'll promote you and put you on our platform. What would you give up for that opportunity? I would want to know what's next. Like I would want to know, like, is this one off? You know, 
are there future opportunities one beyond one it? Yeah, it's they, just they like don't, that's it. Don't own you. Yeah, it's it's 10, 10 pieces. That's it. They don't mm -hmm. own you. There's no big agency relationship. It's just it's hmm. this opportunity. Oh, then I would also have to ask, uh, what are they able to provide? You know, is it just the ability to showcase in a gallery, or are they millions, millions of views to, to your to your work? Wow! And and potential, yeah. potential collectors. If you a million, a million, <laughs> then yeah, yeah, a million viewers. That's a good deal. Yeah, I like that for sure. So what, so, so you do so... fifty fifty, or what would you give up? Yeah, because they're bringing me. 500,000 more opportunities than I could have ever, you know, even if they're keeping 500,000 of them, right? That's opportunity I would have gotten anywhere else. And um, yeah, is that a deal? I, I, I don't Put your hand on <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Great deal. These are, I mean, I, these are the kind. Yeah. Go ahead, well boy. I didn't know that 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 a million impressions was was one of the metrics involved. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that was the idea, right? It's like they're they're going to drive traffic and potential collectors to you. That's the value that they provide, right? So, but either way, yeah, I think you know probably. these are the questions that you as creatives should be ready to like think about and and answer, right? If if somebody comes to you tomorrow and asks you to be part of their new platform or to represent you in a show, um, you know what are the things that you need to ask for um, and and expect in and what would you be willing to give up for certain opportunities? I do think Fun Uncle asked a really important question, and that was what happens next. And the reason that's important is that you know you should be limiting any sort of exclusivity or any sort of arrangement to a certain window. You definitely, in my opinion, most artists are not going to be benefited by that old school, like music model that Lola was talking about where, you know, some, some record label of some kind or some kind of label comes in and owns you in perpetuity owns, owns your masters basically for, you know, the next, however many years, there's no reason I think that any artist should be signing on to BS types of deals like that, but also understanding what, when and where do you give up certain things to get those opportunities? I think it's a really important mm -hmm. question that we should all be thinking about and trying to educate around. Um, and what I would say, one last thing before I hand it off to Woe Boy and we move on from here. I would just say for any of those investors, any of those, you know, big collectors or gallerists, people that are trying to get into the space and maybe do their shows or, or, you know, start their own platforms, things like that. What we're looking for on our side and fighting for is more equity and value for the creators and artists. And as long as, long as you understand that, and you're, you're not just thinking that the old ways are gonna fly and that you can figure out what are those value propositions that you can provide in this new space, in this new paradigm to the artists and creators who deserve that value and will get it with or without you, I think then you're, you're on a, a much better trajectory. Um, those are my thoughts. What's next? I like your, Fun I like Uncle your thoughts. Boy. I like oh, your thanks. thoughts. I like your thoughts, friend. And uh, hey, in, hey, you know what's I, next? We, I, you know, we, got boy, little, we, we got a little video. I, we got a little video. I, 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 so, I like the cut of your jib. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Nice. So cool. So freaking beautiful. Um, I love street art. Uh, I love graffiti work. When I was, uh, when I was in middle school, I would have kids, uh, uh, fellow students pay me $20 to make their name and like, and draw on like graffiti with whatever, uh, thematic background that they wanted. And so that was my first little hustle, uh, when I was in middle school. 
but uh, it, it pales in comparison to the stuff that these people wait, are making. Oh boy, um, I can't believe we've never, <laughs> we've never connected on this. My first ever hustle in second grade was making drawings of like fighter jets and soldiers and like little like video game stick figure war war scenes and selling those. So That's the so fact funny. that we both, we both started, uh, you know, that was the origin of the Nifty Castle right there was making cartoons in like second grade yeah. for both of us. Would have never Trying known. Oh, That's amazing. But yeah, um, so murals to the metaverse. Lola, what do you think of that video? I thought that was super cool. I have no idea how that would be done, and I would love to learn more about that <laughs> and bring you guys on that journey. Or if Whoa Boy would you'd like to explain how that um how we would take a mural to the metaverse? Mmm, it's a great question. So um the the idea yeah the idea of uh, murals to the metaverse is um there's this uh there is a a very famous uh, uh, tower in Oakland called the Tribune Tower, and there's uh, on the fifth story they made a bunch of, uh, of 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 murals on the fifth story of it, uh, painted a bunch of murals and documented the process and stuff. But also they scanned the final product, um, the the walls, everything, and then recreated them as these three dimensional pieces, uh, which are going them? to be for sale. I so the process. I have no idea how they yeah, did it. Um, it seems like there might be some juicy. Yeah, I have no idea how they executed that. Um, they might have. Yeah, I don't. I, I have no clue. Yeah, they it's on extremely here. cool looking. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, they're they're digitizing cool. it and then putting it up in in either their own. I don't know if this is their own metaverse or they're doing this in in like crypto voxels or another one. Um, it, it reminds me, first of all, I think it's a really cool idea, right? And so shout out to Maker's Place and the people behind this. Like, I think it's dope. Um, definitely something that we should check out October 22nd. There you go. Uh, Murals to the yeah, Metaverse. Yeah. Look out for that. It's coming up. It's oh, the yeah. 16th now. So October 22nd. That's coming up soon. Yeah, but it reminds me of a couple of things. Uh, first thing that it reminds me of, uh, and I have to shout out All City Collectibles, who is a homie in the space, OG, you know, Clubhouse NFT fam. All City Collectibles actually did, as far as I know, the first ever art walk in the metaverse. Um, so Fun Uncle, I don't know if you can pull this up live, uh, but if you go to allcityhq.com, it will actually tap you right into Crypto Voxels, I believe at the beginning of the art walk. It, it, it was actually an event that went on for a couple of days, but you can still go to allcityhq.com and you can see some of the graffiti murals uh, that All City Collectibles has curated and put up in crypto voxels. Um, so that was really cool. I actually enjoyed that. That was actually one of my first real times like hopping into crypto voxels, seeing the potential of like hanging out with friends in there and like walking around and seeing all the different art and all the different murals uh, that were in there. So definitely want to shout out All City Collectibles because, again, I think they were the first to do kind of a similar ish idea um and with murals going up in the metaverse and crypto voxels and also you know all city they're just dope people cool people there you go yeah you can see some of the art there but yeah they had literally different locations and like ports that you could port from one area in crypto voxels to another and then keep going through like it was a whole art walk through crypto voxels it was amazing uh what, what so all city cool. wow curated so it reminds me of that first and foremost um but secondly it reminds me of manny links uh, who is an incredibly talented artist, mural artist, painter, uh, friend in the space. He lives out here in LA. He actually came through yesterday to look at some of the walls here at Nifty Castle HQ because he's going to be throwing up some uh, murals, some Nifty Castle murals, some DB's inspired murals, some really, really amazing artwork. I have no doubt. We started brainstorming just a little bit yesterday. And uh, so in the next couple of weeks, whenever uh, I'm back from NFT NYC, uh, Manny Lynx is going to be out here. And that's something we're going to be capturing and sharing with all of you live is Manny's process, showing the work that he does here. Um, yeah, so murals are dope and I cannot wait for that. Woo. Yeah, uh, Gifted, you should definitely uh, document some of that so that we can or share with people. It. 
Yeah. Somebody send yeah. me a camera. Some, somebody you have send a me camera. Me. You oh, have a yeah. oh, cool. No, it's, it's, it's going to be documented. We're, we're going to capture it all. We, I'm, I'm hoping that we can actually do some of that live like while he's here because he's probably going to be mm. crashing at the castle for a couple nights uh, while it's going on. So, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to be sharing all of that and getting into it cool. with Manny Lynx. Um, I can't wait. It's, it's going to be insane. Yeah. I, I just oh, want yeah, more. Yeah. I just want more art on my walls. That's mm. it. Mm, mm, mm. I just want to draw attention to uh, one more thing about the about uh, murals to the metaverse um, and the people that are creating it. Uh, made possible by Endeavors, an Oakland-based grassroots initiative supporting culture mm. and arts, speaks to the power of community on and offline. Um, curated and produced by Rachel Wolf Goldsmith and Endeavors. Uh, the six individual NFTs will be sold as a one of one, which can be split up and sold on a secondary market by the collector. Until this point, muralists have photo photographed and animated photos of their murals to be sold as NFTs. Um, murals to the metaverse elevates the concept of what an NFT is using 3D scans of entire wall, teleporting it into an imaginary wor digital world where they float in anti-gravity. So like for me thinking about this, like I, I would love to have like a little piece, like a little graffiti art, three-dimensional piece that I could put like on a desk or like, yeah, that, that to me Ooh. sounds so cool. Like oh. I, I would, I would personally love, I would love to sport that and like rock that like in a work environment or, or even like at home somewhere for like creative purposes. Like that's the type of stuff that I would want around me and my creative shrine. It's brilliant. It's brilliant because one of the issues with murals, especially street art, right? So Lola, I'm sure you can you can uh, relate to this, right? Is that it's very transient, right? It, it like you put it up and you might spend you know a whole night or a couple days or a week working on this incredible piece that either gets painted over or it you know it decays because of erosion and the weather and things like that. And so it can or be you get done really for it. quickly, or you get arrested and and you know they just paint over it. So it's like you know these pieces of art. That's why I think people appreciate graffiti art books. Like I've got quite a few art books of graffiti art and a lot of that art, you know, existed only for a short window of time and then never again. But luckily a few, you know, some people captured it and then they printed it up. Right. But this is brilliant because, you know, you're taking this, this medium, this, uh, art, uh, this, you know, these murals that people, these incredible artists create and you're giving them, uh, legacy. You're, you're putting them on the blockchain potentially forever. You're bringing them to life and giving them new utility. So this, this just inspired me because you know what's uh, hilarious is that literally yesterday when Manny was here and we were talking about doing murals here, he was concerned about doing it on the walls for that reason and was like, oh, maybe we should do it on a canvas um, instead of the walls because, you know, maybe I'll move or maybe it'll just get, it's just going to have to get painted over at some point. Mm -hmm. And so that like literally we can now 3d capture his murals, right? That to me just gave me a potential solution is that other than just, you know, it living here for a couple of years while I'm here and then painting over it, maybe we can actually do a 3d scan and uh, turn it into a dope 3d NFT instead of just like a 2d digitized version. Um, so that's brilliant. Yeah, and it can live on all kinds of walls. I'm assuming like they can put it on different structures, right? They can build different looking walls or buildings that they could put in the metaverse instead of just like the one wall that you, it would live mm -hmm. on physically. It like transform the structure completely. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. the that's the cool thing about about the about the metaverse in general and just like games and and the digital space is that the laws of physics and all, all this stuff. Uh, you can re reappropriate uh, pieces and 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 uh, apply them in in ways that you like reimagining the art and and be able to showcase it in ways that you wouldn't be able to uh, in the physical world. So yeah, it'll be cool to see that if people do uh, do derivative work or or are able to then apply it like in the metaverse in a cool like new way. Um, yeah, that's 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 cool to think about. You said derivatives. Ooh. Heck yeah. 
Um, and um, speaking of that, I mean, well, boy, do you have any other last thoughts about murals to the metaverse before we kind of like uh, no, no, wrap no. up this segment? And keep it, keep it moving. I, I loved that video though. I think it's a dope idea. So October twenty second, check out murals mm-hmm. to the metaverse. Don't miss out on what seems like a really, really cool and innovative new new project um, highlighting mural artists. Um, but I did want to hit back take a do a call back to the very beginning lola you were asking and you were talking about nft nyc i'd love to hear uh who's going you know if you're going hit us up in the chat let us know because whoa boy and i are definitely going and we want to link up with all of you we're going to have some po apps we're going to have some dbs we're going to have nfts different things to give away if you bump into myself or whoa boy in new york city uh so definitely let us know if you're going to be there but lola do you have plans are, are you going to, to nft nyc yeah I, I probably will be so catch me there too find me if you can oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. another another <laughs> RTL meetup link up reunited yeah heck yeah <laughs> uh, that's amazing yeah, yeah. And, and she's she's impossible to miss because she's like 10 feet tall can you, you yeah. can see it from miles away. <laughs> exactly. Um, much. She, she is like- That's her presence. Her. That's her presence. Yeah, her energy is is infectious. I hope that y'all get the chance to meet uh, Lola at some parties in, in New York City. Um, fun uncle, are you going to NFT NYC? Sorry guys, I can't make it. You know, I could not make it work with all my other projects. I'm, I, yeah, and now I'm like super bummed. Like, you guys are gonna be there? Ah, oh, come on, you know, Hello. it's gonna be so fun. Just, like, yeah, massive cool. FOMO. Mm, mm. I'm missing out in big way. <laughs> oh man, well, we'll, we'll, we'll be busy with the nieces here. and nephews. I'll be there in spirit, yeah. you know? I'll have plenty of nieces oh, and nephews definitely. there. You're right, yeah, that's yeah, great. They'll bring me souvenirs. <laughs> we'll FaceTime you. Yes. Yeah, send us some yes. fun uncle swag and, and we'll give it out to some of the just homies. Hawaiian shirts, yeah. you know, just Hawaiian, Hawaiian shirts, <laughs> faded by the <laughs> sun. Hawaiian shirt uh, in New York City, if, if you find us on behalf of fun uncle, who unfortunately will not be joining. But if you are, hit us up in the chat, in the comments, let us know, let's connect, let's link. And uh, it's going to be freaking dope. So many amazing people are going. Lola Menthol is going to be there. Yeah. Um, I'm stoked. I'm crashing. I'm crashing on the homie's couch in Brooklyn. Uh, so shout out Lucky uh, for shout hooking it up with Brooklyn. the couch. Lucky's got yeah. there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't even know if we want to get into where everybody's staying. Uh, it's gonna get desperate out there. It's gonna be busy. <laughs> Addresses. <laughs> don't let them know. Yeah. We can't dox. No, no, we can't. We can't dox That's, ourselves. Come on. Yeah. No. Dox the heck out of ourselves. <laughs> Uh, so how about we, how about we dig into some artists a little bit here? What are we doing? Oh, absolutely. Some, some, a couple, a couple yeah. artists. Yeah. I've been waiting my whole life for this moment for you to ask me to dig right. into some artists. Uh, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Okay. So I got all kinds first, of art loaded up here. Yeah. What do you want first? Yeah, man. I think, uh, the first artist, uh, that love to shine a little light on, uh, I know Gifted and myself are very familiar uh, with her. Uh, um, this piece, the first one, is called Golden Goddess Yamaya, Mother of the Sea by Crystal O'Flaherty. If you could it's... go to the next, uh, so move, move to the next one, the next one. Oh, it's okay, next okay. One. This is, that this one. is still, uh, okay. got it. Yeah, oh, yeah. here we go. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. That so, seems more Crystal... like a golden goddess for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, Crystal, uh, her medium, uh, she she's a photographer and then she takes uh, her subjects. She'll she'll uh, ornate them with all different types of 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 beautiful uh, of decoration. She decorates her artists or her subjects. um, And these models are just like we we went to a live event where she had uh, it was very immersive and some of her models were just like decked out it looks so freaking cool so i can only imagine what it's like being on a just a photo shoot with her when she's focused on you uh, entirely i was gonna say i want to be on her subjects right <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. pick me yeah pick it's, me. it's maybe we can make that happen <laughs> crystal crystal sick. key of the castle crystal key you hear that lola methal wants wants to model for you let's make it happen heck yeah uh, Heck yeah! Um, yeah, so but, but yeah, this is this is, awesome. this is the first piece. It's called Golden Goddess Yamaya, Mother of the Sea. What are your thoughts? Really making a splash with this one. 
The tides Let's are go, changing, Bumble. guys. I can't quit. I can't quit. Uh, it's quit. all I've got. Please keep going. <laughs> She's all wet. She's all wet. Oh, man. No. I'm floundering here, guys. I'm floundering. No. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's dope. So, so, yeah, so this is obviously it started with the photography and the model. It's like a real, you know, actual photography that then has been composited into this super, yes. super awesome sort of uh, – it, I, I like the frame around it too, but it's like, it, it goes beyond the frame. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, it breaks the frame. It has a frame, but then breaks the frame because it's actually yeah, it like kind of beyond the frame. Which I think is a cool, a cool idea. It makes it more immersive. Um, so it makes me feel more like uh, immersed into the piece itself. And to be honest, my favorite part about the whole thing is the turtles, but specifically the golden dolphins. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen a golden dolphin. It's the first mm -hmm. time I think I've ever seen a golden dolphin. And then you got the stingray in there too. Um, so yeah, I just fish think it's really cool. Little yellow fish. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, right there. Oh, the little, that's, yeah. the, that's the little fish that could. And it's And then it kind of looks like there's a mermaid. It, hold up, is that a mermaid on the left? Like the butt? Oh yeah. A mermaid? Mm -hmm. You better believe it. Yeah, mm, that I has think, to be. I think your theory, I think this is something that we might bring her on sometime and ask her, hey, we have a theory about this piece. Uh, we think mm. that there's a mermaid. Is there, is there indeed mm. a mermaid? And um, uh, it, are mermaids real? Um, I'm so imagining <laughs> also, I'm, I'm also imagining, I'm imagining now that actually like the biblical story of Moses parting the Red Sea, like how it actually worked um, was that Moses had a relationship with this lady, the golden goddess. And so that was how he made it happen is that, you know, they were kind of, they had some history. Maybe it was good. Maybe it was bad. I guess she was still on his side. So maybe he was throwing it down. I don't know. God, but dear. like, anyway, <laughs> I, think, I think this, this lady, this golden goddess, uh, was the one who actually parted the Red Sea and kind of just let Moses take the cred. This is wow. photographic proof. Wow. Yeah. That's canon. I this is photographic know. evidence. <laughs> <laughs> Photographic evidence was that low? of how how the Red Sea was. At. Yeah, what was that? Oh, just ha had you not told me it was a photograph, I would not have immediately thought that. That would not have been my first thought. Yeah, no, she did a really, really awesome job of compositing it for sure. Um, so shout out, Chris, and that's clarity. that's super consistent in her work. So if you look at the next one, um, which is. Uh, periwinkle fairy of the dream no. time um, th it's actually a wow. video um so there there's a there's a video i didn't know i i just uh uh screenshotted the actual piece um because i i wanted to deliver you know get make sure fun uncle had everything at his finger oh thanks know? for thinking of me babe um, I, you know man um so <laughs> but, but but again like her her, I think colors just pop like in, in all of her uh, pieces. Like she has a way of like drawing your eye and, and just like you're, you're completely immersed like in the color. Like I think color is one thing that just like draws you uh, in completely. You see gold is consistent in this one too. Um, she does she does a really good job with more of the like monochromatic color palettes too like this one's obviously very heavily purple you know it's not it's not entirely monochromatic but um but i remember what what you were talking about that event that crystal where she basically produced and created a bunch of these incredible cosplayers i remember specifically that that one uh i don't remember was she a mystic or a witch of some kind but she was like all red just monochromatic red from like head to toe, like face, everything covered. Yeah. And it's like a really powerful, like when you see sort of the nuances within the, the single uh, tone, right? The single hue um, with the different textures as well. It's just like a really powerful uh, thing. I don't know. So yeah, she, she does these sort of monochromatic color palettes incredibly well. And, and I, I love purple and gold. So I'm a fan, I'm a fan of this. It makes the accents pop. Yeah, but it, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Absolutely. Uh, but also it's like the, it doesn't look like a real person, but that is actually a real person 
uh, and a real mm-hmm. outfit and a photo. Definitely um, make them like mm-hmm. fantasy for sure. Turn them into a fantasy yeah. creature. Yeah, it's yeah. it's 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 so immersive, and I love fantasy. Fantasy is one of my favorite genres. And when I saw this, I was like, man, like you see people like you know taking their beauty shots on Instagram and stuff. Like you want to be. This is what you want to like. Like I think this is the coolest re- reimagination of like a glamour shot is like being uh, 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 depicted in a fantasy world, and then also like you you do have to. S- take a second glance like that's an actual photo like i had no idea uh that 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 they were composited photo- photographs either to be frank uh lola like i literally asked her when i saw her work at first i was like wait these are actual this? people yeah, yeah 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 so she kudos to to crystal um yeah it's a yeah, there's, wonderful piece there's a lot of you know i i guess a last word on it is like there's a lot of different things that go into making something like this. Cause it's not just, you know, being good at Photoshop compositing. Uh, like she's creating these outfits that they're wearing the makeup, like all of that. So the actual character design and like the actual, you know, fashion design or whatever you want to call that on top of the compositing. And then this, the photography, like that's an incredible shot. I mean, she captured, Mm -hmm a certain look in in this character's eyes and a certain emotion and feeling like it's an incredible photograph even before it's doctored and composited and all that stuff right so yeah it's just mold like tiers of talent right levels of talent that went into creating something like this so yeah shout out crystal uh love it yeah cool, cool and what would be really cool too is if this was like um an equal collab like the subject was also playing a part in what she was wearing and how she was going to look and the kind of setting that they were going to be in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because to me, photographs like that are like capturing someone's essence. And if this is how this person mm-hmm. like feels their soul can be best represented or like their personality or their aura or any of those, any of those things, that also would be a really cool thing. And if that is consistent with the other subjects, like that can dramatically, like photographs can dramatically change how people perceive themselves when they see that picture. Lola's yeah. speaking it into existence right now. That's what she's doing. <laughs> she's, spe- she's speaking it into existence. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think it, it does capture like an essence, right? Like definitely like I see that and I feel like there's some essence of this character captured there. So I agree. I think it's super dope. Um, but yeah, yeah what, what else yeah. we got? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we, we've got uh, two two more pieces of hers. Um, uh, this guy right here, again, another photograph. Again, it doesn't look what? like, wow. like, okay. like, <laughs> how he's floating. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just stop it. We have green screens. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe uh, it. This real. man went to space. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> trying to fool us, boy. boy. I don't believe you. Uh, the, the title of it is Warlock. I can see that. Yeah, it's a cool title for sure. Mm-hmm. And um, well, yeah, he looks like, like he's too. I, I am seeing though, to your point, well, boy, there's a, a through line on all of these that is, is the gold accents. This, is this Chevy yeah. Chase? That kind of looks like Chevy Chase to me. Am I am I seeing that? Okay, I that's assume, not Chevy I Chase. We all we all understood that this is definitely Chevy Chase. <laughs> we're, 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 we're on the same page, right? Oh, okay, it's a young Chevy. Got it. All right, yeah. Young yeah, <laughs> Chevy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Warlock. Nas- as, as national la- National Lampoon's Warlock. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, one thing that's super cool is the replication of of the the star that you see in the distance on his forehead pretty much that's how i feel it's like taking the energy uh of the of of the sun that's beyond that planet that's behind it whatever that star is um and it's like it's being like channeled like through his freaking forehead on whatever that jewelry piece is um i think that's super cool that's something that caught my eye like right away and then you look down to his right hand um because there's that the, the light almost as if he's conjuring like energy there so it's like yeah another magical okay. freaking piece but this yeah. one this dude he, yeah he feels like he's powerful right um 
and also the positioning too like how he's almost like looking down at us like what did we do to him like uh <laughs> <laughs> are you here to say yeah, are you here to save me or here to hurt me? Like, I, gotta, I can't tell. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not Should sure. I be turned on or turned <laughs> off? I don't know. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> uh, I just want to say she's actually a collector of mine. I just, I just like, realized now. Whoa. That's amazing. Ooh, yeah, yeah, so there you go. Well, more, more crazy. Pops. She yeah. has actually um, a collaborative piece that I did with Vijay Nure or Carmen, if you guys are familiar. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, she actually has one of our pieces. That's so crazy. How did I not realize that or like recognize the name? That's nuts. Thank you for the reintroduction, little boy. Yeah. Yeah, Crystal is an amazing part of the NFT community. If y'all don't know her, um, not just as an artist, but just as a human and a collector. And she's been, you know, somebody that we've known uh, since early on the clubhouse days. So getting a chance to like actually, yeah, get more acquainted with some of her work is actually really cool. But one of the things that I do like about this piece that I think uh, Fun Uncle was kind of hitting on is the ambiguity. Like, what is he about to do? Is he about to save yeah. us from some danger or is he about to be the danger? Is he about to rain down, you know, uh, electric missiles on our heads or is he like here to protect us? I don't know. It's very ambiguous. <laughs> Could go either way. Go either That's way. what I love about it. That's what I love about it too. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Um, and and uh yeah it's it's quite daunting but again another wonderful piece by crystal uh we'll move on to the last one I actually just i had one more note there's something oh, popped in my mind no, no, i can't no. remember there was a poet that said that you know in order to hate something you have to love it first you know mm. because you would never have hated that thing and 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 there's like a very thin line between love and hate and so whenever we're having this conversation i was just like oh man you know like Maybe that is hate, maybe that is love, but if it is hate, it had to have come from a paid place of love originally, right? Mm. And, uh, you know, I had to say something. I do something. feel like, <laughs> I feel like you're onto something here, Fun Uncle Boy. Like he, he, I think is experiencing, like he just got broken up with. Oh, so look at this. Like, yeah, the I'm shadow sure. in his eyes. He's been crying, I'm yeah. Sure he's, oh, shit. I'm pretty sure that he's about to destroy the planet Earth because some girlfriend ghosted him on the third <sighs> Cinder <Day>. So, <laughs> Now I'm feeling sad for him. <laughs> His angry yeah, face. Uh, he will love again. He will love again. He will love again after he I kills us so. all. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. No, like there's a. Uh, yeah. What's what's the, the like? <laughs> what's 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 the in, like incels? Like I, I could I could see him being like sort of the, the like incel oh, super superhero. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like he's, oh, he's, oh, he's, oh, oh. he's gonna like kill all like all the women that turned him down in high school or something. I don't know. <laughs> like with his light of super it, it it was it was once the light of vulnerability, and now that light is going out. <laughs> yeah, that it light no has turned shine. into something much much darker. Um, well, alright, that one's dark. Yeah. What's what 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 else we got, little boy? The last one of of of, uh, of of hers is Medusa's Revenge, is what this one's called. Mm -hmm. This one is insane. Yeah. This one is. Like... Yeah. Um, just think about the stuff that she had to bring in for this. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what yeah. she. Those were yeah, massive like. Like... Yeah. Nah, that's mean. Epic. Oh man, it's like those. It's like those. Uh, those parachute those those things that you would play with like in middle like when you're in middle school and everyone would go underneath of that like you would you would you would put the tarp up in the air and then everyone would sit underneath of it and they would be oh yeah you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hex, yeah. yeah medusa slays at that game like she, <laughs> really, like, she just kills it um, that's when you um, win the game this happens to you once you win that game no yeah. one knows no one had ever won before until she yeah. won <laughs> she yeah. traps you, you always... underneath of that of that and then and then she can look at all of you and then it's over oh. yeah yeah mm -hmm. I, I thought i thought maybe she just parachuted in but i i much i much prefer uh, the narrative that that actually she's on recess and like she's just dominating that game <laughs> right now <laughs> Everybody wants Medusa on their team at recess uh, mm. for various reasons. 
she she uh was at the at the secret knock event uh medusa was there um if you do remember yeah to, uh, so we got to see but, but, this, it, was, but it, it was different obviously it was, but it was stone, uh, yeah it wasn't all great yeah, it was, like this. Mm -hmm. was it was it to scale uh <laughs> yeah this, <laughs> that's all i've size. got man yeah. that's all i've got <laughs> I'm I, this half of this goes over my head. Like, <laughs> I'm literally over your head. I'm literally over your head right now. There, there you go. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, wow. I, I love how epic this is. It, it it just reminds me of like God of War, which is like one of my favorite oh, video games yeah. of all time. That like yeah. epic. Mm. Myth mythological sort of you know uh greek you know roman greco-roman sort of vibes like i don't know this is dope i i love the mythological and it's got like the i don't know if that's like a three-headed serpent pet that's that's probably medusa's pet back there i'm guessing yeah yeah but but like but if we're gonna be honest though like she could really use a brush Mm. Uh, <laughs> mm. Oh, Wait, can you zoom back out? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait. Oh, shit, my bad, my oh, bad. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting scroll happy, guys. It's reflecting off of something. The parachute leaf thing. Ooh. Like, this is like, water? It's on, it's hmm. like in wa yeah, it seems to be on water or something. Like, over here? Yeah. Up and down, even, like, all the way at the bottom. Get like, out that, of my swamp. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's reflective. Reflecting. Yeah. How well, the light yeah. bounces off of it, yeah. Yeah, that's sick. I'd I'd love like to, to see picture. I'd love a gif of yeah. of Medusa like like brushing her hair. Like that would be what a a, a brush yeah. for Medusa looks yeah, like. Yeah, comb is not gonna cut it. It's a bunch of a mongooses. <laughs> Yeah. But one of the so. things, though, like kind of to what Lola is pointing out is, you know, one of the biggest challenges when you're doing composite art like this is is matching the lighting. And like she's done an incredible job with these photographs and then the composite and the editing that she's doing. Like the lighting looks like it all flows and fits within the same world in the same frame. Like it really feels like she's in that setting. Um, I say she, I don't know what Medusa's gender is. I don't want to gender Medusa. How, how dare I? Um, but it really seems like they are in that scene. Yeah, with a uh, python like that, why would you call Medusa a woman? Come on. Oh my <laughs> hot oh points. My, God. my yes. uncle's making hot points. Uncle's at it again. Another one for Uncle. at it again. <laughs> I'm just a man pressing the buttons over here, guys. Pressing buttons, yeah. having fun. Uh, was that the last no, one for Crystal? That was... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Crystal, this this is Crystal O'Flaherty, um, and, and her Twitter is Crystal underscore O. So you guys can check yeah, out. Yeah, we'll work. put that. We'll um, put that in 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 the D bar. Do they still call it a D bar? We'll put it in the description, y'all. But yeah, check out Crystal. Yeah. Follow her. D bar. Get, get, get to know her because she's just a person to know. She's dope. This next feller, mm. Man Manuel, uh, uh, I think it's Piedra or. Pedra, I'm not sure. Um, this the name of this piece is unidentified flying lovejet. Mm. Mm, I like it. I see That's, what he did there. It's very nice. I like it. Mm. Is this another photo so, composition? No, it can't be. What was this? A photo is a of? Digital, it's a digital painting, so it is. Oh, it is not a photo. It is, it is all, it's digital, it's just a digital painting. And this guy, yeah, he's extremely talented. Um, yes. Say his name again, Man Manuel. Uh, Man Manuel, yeah, yeah, Manuel. Uh, uh, it's either Piedra or Piedra, it's P-I-E-D-R-A. -E um, and, and yeah, so what are your interpretations? Yeah. To me, I first thought that looked like a guitar pick. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I thought it looked. It had. But 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 what do you guys think that that is? It's a galaxy. I think. Yeah, like I think it's. Yeah, I think if it if it's not the pick of destiny, that it comes from the same world that the pick of destiny <laughs> came from. 
So maybe it's like the mothership, uh, the mother pick uh, of, de- of of love and destiny together. Uh, but I, I I like the I like the fun of this. Do you know what I mean? Like he's having fun with the name. You know, even calling it like unidentified uh, flying love object. Object. Love object. <laughs> Like oh, you know, I see I see what Manuel did there, and and I and I like it. I like the cut of his jib. Um, and so maybe that is is literally uh, his jib being cut. I don't know. That sounded mm. weird. Um, yeah, yes, it did. Yeah. It sounded. <laughs> yeah, no, I I do see. I see like the colorful galaxy in it, and maybe that's just like what what love looks like. You know, if it mm. was personified okay. or created or painted into a, a an, an identified oh, flying true. object, because it's it's bigger than time and space. Good. You know stretches beyond the physical matter oh man you're getting deep baby and it looks it looks like it's coming like it's coming out of the heart there yeah that cloud which is like it's it's like a piece of it that has been ejected um or or it could have flown through and and broken the heart which could be a totally different interpretation maybe it's a heartbreaker uh, yeah that's what i thought that was my initial thought. Like it was coming from the other side and going right through the heart. And yeah, because it, it looks like it's got a lot of momentum, right? Well, like, so I don't know. It, it could have been ejected though and created within that cloud and then flown out of it though. So maybe it's not yeah, breaking yeah. the heart. How could you break our heart like this Department of Intelligence? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I, I I just love the creativity like that he's he's literally like saying this is what I think that a flying object of love would look like, and it's it's clearly like the the amount of skill that it takes to do a digital painting like that uh, is very high. It's a very high skill ceiling. So yeah, props to Manuel. Uh, clearly, super super talented digital um, painter, digital illustrator. Congratulations. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> congratulations yeah um yeah let us know let us know what you think is happening in, in the comments did that uh did that sure. pick fly through and break the heart or is it of the heart was it created in the heart i don't know what do you think mm-hmm. it's a love song it's a total eclipse of the heart it's a love song ah nice. Yeah. Nice. it is a <laughs> this next piece um it's called reach out by manuel Ooh, wait. Oh, wait. Yes. Oh, boy. You got to hand it to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will have thumbs up. Yeah. I can't Dude. put my finger on what I like about this. Yeah. <laughs> so what I will say yeah. is that it is, it is a, uh, a well-known thing um, among artists. One of, the, one of the hardest things to to draw to express to sh- to uh to 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 create our hands Master. hands are like yeah. hands are so difficult to do and this person manuel <laughs> made a hand out of hands uh so. yeah he's just next level mastery there <laughs> challenge accepted accepted yeah <laughs> yeah Sheesh. incredible challenge acknowledged uh, like he he, he, wow. he really nailed it like like i feel like he's getting the grasp you know um my yeah. man my man <laughs> trying to compete with fun uncle and his puns over here it's i got a long, got a long way influence. to go uh but like, yeah I you mean, guys are so cute pickle this piece is um, dark it's, a, it's, a, it's impressive like to me to me, like I'm trying to imagine like the world where this exists, and it just feels like some kind of nightmare. Uh, For sure, I don't know. It's, it has a very like this, vibe this, to it. Yeah, like the labyrinth. You know what I mean? This feels mm-hmm. like it would exist in a nightmare or in the movie The Labyrinth. Like one of the creatures would be like just made out of hands. Uh, like in it, like I'm, I'm imagining that there's a whole other rest of a body attached to this hand hand uh handy hand <laughs> and is just all made out of many many hands and it's it's just uncomfortable to look at and disturbing um, or every body but, part is made of that body part like a, like a, his legs are made of legs yeah oh, or like man. Or, yeah or, 
Oh my gosh. Or how many fingers am I holding up? That what a fun game that would be. (laughs) (laughs) Too many to count. Yeah. Never have I ever. Put a finger down. Oh my God. (laughs) Heads up, seven up. Heads up. Thousands Jeez. of um, thousands. Yeah, thousands. well, but I mean, really, but yeah, again, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, again, it's just very impressive uh, from mm-hmm. an artistic standpoint to be able to to paint like this and create you know a mm-hmm. digital image mm-hmm. that looks it's it's you know real real uh, realism. Um, like those are pretty real looking hands, but in a surreal environment and uh, concept. And so, yeah, that's a very, very hard thing to do. And again, Manuel, props to you. Incredibly, yeah. incredibly, congratulations, Manuel. You're talented. Again, twice on the now same can, show. Yeah, congratulations on this piece. Sheesh. Did it. Round of Jeez. applause. Um, Round. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for creating <laughs> one of my new favorite pieces in the NFT space. Honestly, when I saw this, I was like, damn, this is, I've, I just thought it was so cool. Very, very creative, super creative. So, um, yeah, very cool. We'll, we'll move on to the next piece of Manuel's. Um, this is called Elon Mask. Mm. Tell us the story behind it. Mm. Stoic. In the description, it mentions that um, that uh, digital identities. Uh, it was inspired by digital identities and how people can act however they want behind uh, these facades and these uh, identities that people are like creating uh, for good or bad. Um, and, and and that's what you could you could paint whatever type of face you want on that mask. Um, He's sculpting a personality was, right now, right? Pretty much, yeah. Got it, got it. <laughs> well, there's clearly a contrast between, you know, what is presented <clears throat> on the mask and what's happening behind the mask. And that's the thing that I think he's really hitting on, right, is, yeah, that that, that the, the, there's a facade that we're all putting on, creating of some kind. Um, it's obviously, like, it's relevant to today with the pandemic and everybody wearing these very specific kinds of masks, many of which have art or messages on them. And you don't necessarily know what a person is really, whether they're smiling or grimacing or what's, or maybe they haven't shaved in a million years, like, whoa, boy, Uh, you know, who knows what's happening behind that mask. Um, Because it looks like the person behind it is, is very, Oh, I'm like sorry. Well, like, I'm calling you like out. It. Like, like people didn't know. He, he's never shaved. Um, you know, his beard. But is... yeah, <laughs> the beard is you. Don't 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 ever yeah. change, boy. First of all, don't yeah. ever change. Yeah. Like keep keep uh, keep the beard, please. But no, you can clearly see that there's some kind of distress or something happening with this person behind the smiley mask. Um, and they're all, and I also like that they're they're kind of highlighting this contrast with the black and white versus the color, um, right? So the the black and white is very drab, very sort of serious, and then you've got this very silly, colorful, smiley mask on top. Um, so yeah, mm-hmm. it's a very interesting uh, and powerful yeah. contrast. Yeah. And um, this is a piece that I think would and should be in the history books, especially for this time. It's a very accurate representation of everything that's going on right now in the past like few months, maybe even year between the pandemic and the digital freaking renaissance with the NFTs and this boom in the art world. And I, I can easily see this being analyzed just as we are now in like the universities for the art schools. Like I was briefly taking like art history and these are exactly <laughs> the same conversations that you know we had in there and I'm sure you guys have had similar experiences like analyzing the history yeah. right yeah yeah I'm an art academic yeah I was in art I was in art history just this morning and yeah we were talking about like the exact <laughs> same thing um but yeah no it's uh i think you're right like this this is a this is a statement piece that is very timely 
that I think captures a, a very specific emotion uh, to today that is a time capsule. And that's why it's brilliant that it's an NFT, right? It, it will be a time mm -hmm. capsule of this moment of a very specific feeling and an emotion where, you know, like, I think Lola, you're, you're absolutely right. Like you're onto something, right? It's Cause like now it's making me, me relate even more to that person behind the mask because we've all had experience, you know, like we've all experienced different levels of burnout at different times over the last couple of years, um, especially the last year or two with COVID. Right. And so I, relate with that man that feeling of like oh you put on that mask and like every we just keep going because we're resilient uh adaptive human beings uh but you know you are feeling that that the the world weighing on you sometimes every day um so yeah i don't know well you made me you made me relate to this even more so thank you well <laughs> Oh, this is a great piece. Thank you, oh boy, for sharing this with us. It's definitely, I I would say, my favorite of the ones we've seen. Aww. Nice. I know. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah I, I I enjoyed it too, and and um and and I love the 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 old like like the the statue with the modern mask over top of it um mm. just like like people the, have been the, doing the, right like we haven't seen masks on yeah statues. Mm -hmm. uh the the mixture of those two things and their take on it manuel's take on it um it, it's super cool because as you'll see manuel has so many different styles and is able to like he, he's extremely flexible as far as being an art a digital artist goes a digital painter goes and and um and has so many different types of work so uh yeah this was called ill on mask um and and you can find it on foundation is, is this one available let me see if this one's up for sale uh it is no, it's minted fine. it's but it's not up for sale i don't think but it's an edition mm -hmm. of one so it is on foundation one of one um, yeah that's dope one of yeah. one one of one uh, and, and then Just we'll move like on to you, the next. Boy. Oh, that's me. Um, <laughs> and move on to the next, the next piece. Uh, Royal Blood. This one is called, and this is on Rarible. This is Manny as well. Yeah, this is also him. This is Manuel, Manuel uh, Piedra. Uh, Piedra, yeah, P I E D R A. That art is amazing, Manuel Piedra loved it so glad we got to highlight some of your work y'all check them out in the description and shout out to all of you for hanging out with us but also shout out to the sponsor of today's show db's we got a quick word from them check it out So, you want to buy a DB, huh? Are you sure? They're little troublemakers, little bright-eyed, doll-faced hexpawn, each with a random, unique combination of over 100 traits. It's freaking crazy. There's only 3,053 of them in total. Each one has a membership token that comes with two companion pieces that are free to whoever's holding the originals, and those owners are allowed to create and sell derivative pieces of that DB. Go ahead and make that bread, baby. Out of the 3,053, 54 of them are extra special. Those are called super dupers and bangers. There are a bunch of rare attributes in the whole collection, but super dupers have a gold skull and special one of one attributes that don't appear anywhere else in the collection. The bangers, on the other hand, have a diamond skull and are completely different from any other DB, making them extremely rare. Every DB is one of a kind, but these extra special ones have been randomly arranged through the series, so anyone could get them. Hey, that could be, uh, that could be you. To get your DB, make sure you have your MetaMask wallet ready with at least 0.1 Ethereum in it. Then head over to the niftycastle.io website and tap the button. That's basically it, you just adopted a baby demon. How's it feel to be a parent? 
Oh, oh, watch out, your couch is on fire. Oh, oh, shoot. Once you've got your new bundle of mischief, head over to the Nifty Castle Discord and join the conversation. Hear about news, projects, and giveaways. Nifty Castle is a part of the NFT community and loves to share and talk about new projects. There's also a ton more info about this project on the Nifty Castle site, including the community roadmap and a breakdown of how our derivative rights work, with a special burn clause that allows you to keep selling derivatives even after you sent the little troublemaker back to heck from whence it came. Okay, I love you. Oh man, that video gets me hyped every friggin' time I see it. Um, if y'all haven't checked them out, niftycastle.io. They're almost sold out. Get yourself a little hex spawn. And thank you again to DBs and the Nifty Castle and Lad City for just making this happen. Because without all y'all, without Lad City, without Nifty Castle and DBs and you, Art Start would not be now. It might be never, but it's happening because of y'all. So thank you. And we're going to wrap this up uh, with a quick word also from uh, Fun Uncle, who's our liaison uh, to the Lad City. Uh, as you know, every Saturday, we're going to be crash landing the castle inside the city walls. But uh, Fun Uncle is like kind of our, our pipeline, our main line into the Lad City. Um, so I'd I'm love driving the bus. Just, yeah, <laughs> let's know a little bit more about like there's so many awesome things happening in the Lad City network. Um, this tribe is definitely our vibe, and I'd just love for you to highlight some of uh, what else is coming up oh, yeah. for for the peoples to know. Well, you know, if you're watching this, you know about the Lad City YouTube, but I would encourage you to go to your browser, type in ladz.city, and it'll take you to the terminal to link you to everything, the Twitter, and most importantly, the Discord. We're going to see a whole bunch of like-minded cryptocurrency and NFT enthusiasts, just like yourself, and uh, there's thousands of them there. I think like a thousand active at any given time, and the numbers keep growing. And the reason you want to join the Discord is because we are doing LADS token drops and exclusive NFT drops if you are a noble rank. And so you got to join us. And then you got to join me on Sundays on this same YouTube page. We'll be in the LAD City Lounge with me. We're kicking back. And we're talking about all things LAD City in depth. So please join me there uh, this Sunday at 1 p.m. Heck yeah. We'll be there. Uh, fun uncle, thank you. You're the freaking man up there driving the bus, dropping the puns. We couldn't do it without you. And uh, and to all of you, thanks for hanging out with us on a Saturday. This is this is our first run at this. It's our beta test. You are our beta testers. So let us know what you liked. Let us know what you didn't like. It's all good, but we will be paying attention. We want your feedback and we're gonna continue to grow this thing together. And so thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, as we get this off the ground and we're excited for the next ones next episode coming soon art start now talk to y'all later